Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a game between... Oh. Between Monkuki and Cybernetic Pony. Yes, Monkuki has been playing a lot recently, and this is on Act Natural. Once again, I'm Shadow333, your commentator, and let us begin. Oh, Monkuki starting in the northeast corner of the map, and... Cybernetic Pony in the southwest corner. Cybernetic Pony is not choosing species anywhere faster than Monkuki is. Neither of them... Okay, there we go. Monkuki pausing to choose a species. There we go. Playing as Grekum. And Cybernetic Pony is also Grekum. Grekum mirror on a volcanic island. Didn't really know where to go from there. Grekum aren't exactly known for being a volcanically inclined species. So that doesn't really mean much. I mean, other than being, you know, bright and hot and deadly. Swimming in lava is a bad idea. It's my public service announcement for the week. Don't swim in lava. So both players are not really doing anything too special, just setting up their economy. Now, this is what I was talking about in the last game, about setting up your early resource processor on Q Plasma and then switching it over to Liquid Crystal. Monkey is not doing this. But Cybernetic Pony is. So Cybernetic Pony is clearly quite an, quite paranoid that Monkuki is going to go for an early attack. And also unaware of what Monkuki is actually playing. Because if he knew that Monkuki was playing Grekum, he'd know that it's unlikely any major attack is coming. Possible, but not terribly likely. If it was CISO, I'd be a little bit more worried because... Actually, CISO or Vecchio I could see. But against Grekum, a Cheese Rush is possible, but can be deflected by Octos. An Octopod does, of course, help a ton, but it can be deflected by Octos. It's not as big of a deal. But yeah, Cybernetic Pony clearly concerned that he's going to need to build an Octopod, and just has, in order to defend against whatever Monkuki throws at him. Monkuki going out to scout out with these units, and it looks like... Actually, let's see from his point of view. No, he's going to this outside section. I think he actually is trying to cheese. Actually, you know what? Cybernetic Pony may have been completely justified in his paranoia. And it appears that he is. So, Monkuki has nothing in his main base, relying entirely on his opening RPs, and there we go, gone in progen mode, and I should expect a bunch of Octos coming up. Now, at this point, I'm not surprised that I'm seeing a bunch of Octos coming up, but really, I'm a bit surprised that Monkey didn't actually get that Q Plasma in order to build an Octopod of his own. And at this point, he will be able to rush in and deal quite a bit of damage against this Octopod, but I'm just surprised he didn't build one of his own just to have parity and then push forward beyond that. But this is also happening in the future, by the way. This is happening a minute above the present. And this is all Chrono Energy free, in fact. Three minutes in the, into the game, or uh, the three minute mark, only two minutes in the game, actually. So this is all future events that we're seeing. Now, Monkuki, on the other hand, he's doing a... He's not doing a great job... Def oh, sorry, he's not having to defend. He's not doing any economy at home because he has nothing to do economy with at home. Focusing entirely on this attack, I just was wondering more if he was trying to change it up or doing any echoes, anything up in the back, in the past. Is this just going to be an echo, or is this actually what he's committed to doing? But it looks like he is very much committed to doing this attack. And Cybernetic Pony leading the Octos into his base. Nice strategy there, moving these Octos in here. These first Octos are going to get distracted as they're being picked off by the Octopod. Monkey not paying much attention to this yet, but he might be not building anything else here. He is getting, however, a cycle of Q Plasma of his own. I expect an Octopod of his own shortly. We'll see whether or not he actually does go for that Octopod, but I expect that to happen. And is he going to be mindful of this Octo's bait? I don't think he will be. No, he's letting it go through, but he might... I don't know. He, is he going for this attack? Because these Octos are on move. They are now on attack. So he's... No, he is still chasing after the Octo. Not aware of the fact that the Octopod's here, but still, there's not a whole lot of right options at this point. Right now, Cybernetic Pony doing a great job defending. Nicely getting two Octo Octos onto one and generally distracting the Octos here. So Monkuki moving those Octos back ultimately, and oh, I couldn't quite tell on that early point. He may have echoed out the attack. We'll have to see on the on the upcoming green time wave when that comes around. We'll see what that propagates, because I think Cybernetic Pony may have aborted this completely. He may have echoed this out. It looks like Cybernetic Pony is, and just so you know, he echoed it out. He may have echoed it out, but he certainly hasn't switched species. The species switch would be way too far in the unplayable past. Now, Monkuki is getting up an Octopod of his own. There we go, I was expecting that, and I ex there we go. There's another Octos, but to say, I expect more Octos. If he is committed to this, and appears that he is, 
The green time move will let us know for sure, but I believe he is completely committed to this. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is working on defense. He does have a couple Octos up. He doesn't have much beyond that. Actually, he is disadvantaged for units, and he has no healing in his base or anything. No reefs, nothing that's going to give him any sort of home field advantage, other than the fact that he can produce units slightly closer. Yeah, he basically has no home field advantage. The only advantage is this Arcticus here, which we can use in order to direct forces. Forces can't easily go around it. And they are going to try to shoot it, because if they try to shoot it, then that's going to waste their time. But it's definitely the only thing he has going for him. He has disadvantage in units. He has a slight disadvantage in position. He has a disadvantage in position now. He's more aware of it now. He's moving his Octopod up. A bit of a risk, because he could leave it open to the Octos, but I think this is going to pay off. And losing his home field advantage of the thing there. And Omogu, you pointed out that he actually did mean to do an Echo and Species switch. And not successfully doing so. However, the Octopod is going down. Monkuki is going to be able to pull this off. I think it, there's still another minute and a half that got that Cybernetic Pony, not God. <laughs> if this is God to be. Actually, I don't know. Cybernetic Pony plays really well. So I can't really comment. I, I'd like to see any Cybernetic Pony versus God games. I think there are some. I don't. I've, I know I've casted some. I don't know if I've casted any recently. Because Cybernetic Pony has been playing a lot, and he has been getting better and better. So I think that it'd be a very interesting match to see the two of them play against each other. However, this is not who is playing. Who is playing is Monkuki and Cybernetic Pony, and Monkuki was getting it. But Cybernetic Pony went back, and he is in a better position defensively. Or he was, but no, he's getting some of his units distracted. And it's too close, and they play pass. He had too much about this. I think Cybernetic Pony is going to lose this. It was very close, but he does have the Faro and Seppi. He does have that going for him. But he doesn't have positioning going for him. He doesn't have any hierarchies set up. The Arctic is not using, not being used at all for hierarchies. Monkuki, on the other hand, about, 30, about 10 seconds up. He is, from his point of view, dealing a lot of damage. Jumping back to slightly before, jumping back about 10 seconds, or 15 seconds or so, before the stack happens, and very cleverly micromanaging his units back, luring Cybernetic Pony's units out and picking them up one by one. Very smart move. And given that Cybernetic Pony can't really do much about this since the current energy restrictions mean it's essentially unplayable past for him, there isn't a whole lot that's going to change. So Cybernetic Pony basically stuck with this, or very close to stuck with this. However, looks like Cybernetic Pony has put himself out of position. His Octo's moving in too much, moving not in it, not enough of a formation. They are actually being destroyed in the process. That set be going down, but that is no big loss. Cybernetic Pony can make it up, no problem. However, there are still some units here, and a nice lure out by Cybernetic, by Monkuki for Cybernetic Pony. And... Monkuki is able to lose his Octopod. No, that's not something he wanted at all. He can go back and fix that up, but he needs to move that Octopod out of the way because that was kind of a trump card, having that Octopod there. Because if he had that Octopod, he jumps back like, now. Now, if he jumps back here. But no, and yeah, units can be disobedient in this, or can feel disobedient in this game just because of the current energy restrictions. I have, I know how you feel, Monkuki. It is a very frustrating thing to have happen. But it looks like he is not losing it ultimately. It looks like Cybernetic Pony had echoed that attack out. Or rather, had pulled his units back, making sure they did not fall into that trap. And getting Faro's up, this should do it for Cybernetic Pony. I think he's going to take this game from here, or at least take this battle. Monkuki can't easily push in and deal any additional damage. Those Faro's are just, they're too much to deal with. So, nice try by Monkuki. And he had a chance there about three or four iterations ago, about a minute ago, but unfortunately that kind of fell through. Didn't quite realize it, or Cybernetic Pony just managed to get around it. And Monkuki is going to be losing these Octos. Nothing going to come from them, and Octopod not really able to do too much either, so once again pulling back, and no additional economy here, while Cybernetic Pony has been consistently building economy this entire game. Not that frequently, but consistently. He has gotten a couple more RPs, and he definitely has a much stronger army. At this point, Cybernetic Pony, he does think he has, slightly upper, he has the upper hand. He does have the upper hand. And this, and now Monkuki is retreating. Seeing him try to recover for the long game. It's going to be an uphill struggle, though. Or is he? No, he is retreating. Okay. He would jump back just to make sure he's retreating as early as possible. It will be an uphill struggle. He actually is getting an Octo over here to try to expand. Just in case he gets attacked in his main base, he will have some resources left. And his main base, nothing has changed much. His Arcticus has not been moved or anything. He's not too worried about an attack directly. He should be, though, because that's exactly what's happening. And the Octopod and Octo are being left to die, but to die valiantly and to protect everyone else. At this point, Monkuki trying to... Looks like he's trying to 
throw off Cybernetic Pony, although admittedly Cybernetic Pony knows where Monkooki is. There's only one place he could be, which is the northeast corner of the map. But he is spreading out. Some of his autos are going over to other expansions, and none of his production units, actually. So his and Faro are going back to where they'd be expected to be. The only advantage is that Cybernetic Pony is not aware of these autos going off into the distance, or at least he probably isn't. And so... Oh no, he's definitely aware. He's he's aware. He knows, and he is finding it right now. These autos will be able to defend somewhat, but there we go. The Faros are about to spot. The Faros. Did they? Okay, there we go. Now they're spotting. I'm thinking, how could they not see that? And the autos are getting them, but it's too late. Cybernetic Pony is well aware of that hidden expansion. He's well aware of those other RPs that will be providing more resources, and he's going for it much more directly this time. Though admittedly, the autos are still going to be a bit of a threat, but the way it is now, there is no way the autos can get through. That's going to be it for these autos, and that expansion is going down. Nice try by Monkuki, but I don't think he's going to be able to recover, at least not easily. He is taking out some of Cybernetic Pony's forces, but Cybernetic Pony is further ahead. From Monkuki's point of view, he's actually doing a bit better from his own point of view. Three Faros are coming in, but the big difference is that a reef is coming up, advanced structures will be being researched. There we go, right away. And. A Spire will come up from there, from there it'll be higher tech units. Cybernetic Bony has the economy to support that. And actually getting this much Q Plasma, I don't think he's going to go for directly chronoporting, but he could he could do that. He could save up money for chronoporting directly, not bother getting air units first. Not an uncommon thing to do. And Monkey is able to save this expansion in the northwest corner of the map, but still he did not save the fact that it's there. And that was much more important. He also isn't producing any more units. He does have those Octos over here that were making RPs. This one can make an RP, though I think Monkuki might be leaving it on defense duty. I would be surprised if he didn't. And there it goes. He's leaving on defense duty, as expected. And in his main base, leave his minions up for defense, but they will not last. Three Faros against one Faro, it should be pretty obvious who should win. And these far this Sepi Faro pair needs to regenerate more Octos. That's what it's doing. Monkuki has enough resources to progenerate as many Octos as he has progen energy for, which is actually nine. No, wait, sorry, it's six. The progen energy is... I don't know, I'm thinking it's two per shot. It's three. He can regenerate at least six. More than that, actually. And with that, he can defend against the Faros as well with the Octos, so that will give him some room to recover a bit. And air units are coming up directly. Cybernetic Pony is going for air units. He is not going for straight for Chrono Porting. And that is going to be the death of this expansion. So this Octo on defense not really doing too much good in its own. And another far pod coming up, probably going to be sent over to the northeast base. And Monkuki at the same time is setting himself up a bit better in his main base, but he's now fully aware of this far pod. He knows that there is a far pod coming in. He's actually is he fully aware of that this far pod is not cloaked? Actually, the Saturday Pony jumping back slightly. That far pod I don't believe was cloaked. But both players have jumped back a couple minutes each. And Cyber Nanny Pony is well ahead here. He is way ahead. At this point, Monkey's best bet would probably be to build some Seppies to deal with this. Seppies and Faro maybe. But even with that, it's it's going to be a real challenge. The Faro Pod being lured in, or possibly lured in. It's attacking this RP and probably will kill it before it gets to Monkey's base. Just because of the sheer lack of fuel that it has. There's only 31 fuel to start, and he uses one for every tile, so it's going to get to about here and then stop. No, the Farbod instead going straight from the main base, not even waiting. It's just going for it, and it's not even cloaked even. It's just it's just attacking. That's how confident Cybernetic Pony is in this. He doesn't even need to cloak his units. Granted, the Arctis here is a detector, so he wouldn't really do him any good, but he just doesn't care. He's just going in uncloaked. Farbod, big strength, too. I'm a bit surprised he's not taking advantage of it. And Cybernetic Pony does not have anywhere near enough money or income to support Chrono Porting right now. He is not shooting for that. Not shooting for early Chrono Port. He is instead shooting for Ariness, as we see. And Monkuki, on the other hand, getting some Seppies. Looks like they're primarily being used for reefs. This one here might be kept for defense. He is not going for reef quickly. It would not surprise me if he did use a reef or did make that into a reef. He can build a lot more Seppies, though, actually. He's got enough energy to build six or so Seppies. That would be enough to get rid of the fire pods, the semi pods coming in. However, he does need to balance that out with economic development, and his economic development has been stunted. The only advantage is that he only has to build about three or four RPs to catch up with Cybernetic Pony. And I mean catch up, actually. It's he's only four RPs down compared to Cybernetic Pony, and he has enough money to build all that. 
He is tech, however, is much less developed. That is a big thing. And I think that there is just really a matter of Cybernetic Pony going for a full assault. This Farapod here is getting distracted by the RP. Farapod and Sepipod both are getting distracted by the RP. It needs to go for an attack. It needs to get a direct hit in. This Farapod here, not a bad idea. Cybernetic Pony is expecting that Mongoogie is just going to be symmetric about his hidden expansions. Clever. However, not the case. So Cybernetic Pony may want to check this out and move it north. I'm sure he'll get to it sooner or later. I mean, he is still quite an advantage right now. Monkuki, however, getting advanced structures of his... Oh, no, getting legal class immediately. That's unusual. That's really unusual. There's absolutely no advantage to legal class other than getting legal class units. Not like with ground units where you get an upgrade to existing units and their attack stats. No, this is purely a unit class availability upgrade. And you can only get that if you have air units. You need advanced structures for Aspire for one of the other two pod class units besides the Octopod. You need two pod class units to build Leo class units. So there's absolutely no reason to be getting Leo class before advanced structures, but yet he's doing so. He's also getting rid of this Farpod. Nice and Monk getting rid of one of the Farpods with a Seppi healed by a Reef. And now the Farpod is going cloaked. And it doesn't matter. Like I said, this Arcticus is a detector. It is able to see what's going on. And it has a very light, wide vision range, so this Farpod really not at all protected by its cloak. Which is why I wasn't surprised that he wasn't cloaking before, but not really helping him now. If he did... Now, Saturday Pony may be microing this right later, or earlier rather. If he goes around, he can't avoid the Arcticus. He can tell where the... Oh no, he can't tell what the Arcticus is from his point of view. He has no idea where the Arcticus is. Would a neutral observer would? A neutral observer would, but Cybernetic Pony does not know where the Arcticus can see. Because it's really important. Because this Arcticus is the reason why he just lost that Farapod there. That's what's detecting for him. And away he goes. Cybernetic Pony retreating from that assault. Mongoogie is given a bit more breathing room. However, not much. Cybernetic Pony in the meantime has taken full advantage of that attack to expand and in doing so has gotten enough money for Chrono Porting. So that's going to be it. That's going to be it. There's Chrono Porting against, uh, against a foe who's economically disadvantaged. I mean, even just on its own, it's really threatening, but when your opponent is economically disadvantaged, there's no way for them to counter chronoporting, and with Grekin being able to chronoport anywhere on the map, the only advantage that Monkey can have is if he's prepared well in advance for anything coming in. If he has Faros and stuff, he's just set up around anything that matters to him, like around the edge of this resource processors and so forth. If he has the resource processors protected by the Seppi and Faro pairs, then he has a chance, but even then it's going to be tough. Even then, there's still at least a minute or so window after Cybernetic Pony's research, and no, even less than that, Cybernetic Pony can actually chronoport now, and there'd be no such window at all. He has not done so, but he could. And Monkuki is going to be getting a spire of his own. He's still about seven minutes behind or so. Yeah, somewhere around there, compared to what Cybernetic Pony has done. I mean, Cybernetic Pony, his advanced structures research isn't even on the timeline anymore. It's that long ago. Well, five minutes or so, at least. More like seven or so, and that's a huge disadvantage in this game. Granted, there are quite powerful anti-air units. Some these do make for powerful anti-air units. They have a very wide attack range. About as wide as the... Ar well, a little narrow in the Arcticus vision range. So, right next to an Arcticus, it wouldn't quite be able to hit all the Farapods it could. But, that's what the Faros are for. But the Faros are not here. Where are the Faros? He... Monkuki had built some Faros, but he doesn't have them right now. Oh, there they are! Further in the future, we see the Farabods are attacking, and I expect Cybernetic Pony will be chronoporting these guys back. Is he doing so? No, he's... Well, he should be. He will be right now. There they go. Jumping back to the 1440 mark. Actually, a really terrible time to jump back to. But able to get rid of these Faros nonetheless, and able to get rid of these Seppis somewhat too. Almost get rid of the Seppis. Just barely getting rid of all of these Seppis. Mongoogie is going to lose this game as a result of this attack. This is it. There is nothing he can do. He can't lift the Seppi up. He has no other Seppis being built. And this Farapod, just getting lucky, barely killing that Seppi before it dies itself. There is nothing Mongoogie can do from here. Except that this Octopod apparently actually getting close enough that it can be a bit of a threat. And the Octopod saves the day. Mongoogie either had prepared for that or... Yeah, he actually had probably prepared for that. Moved that Octopod in sooner. Just barely saves the day. But still, that pushes Monkuki even further behind. At this point, he has 6 RPs, 3 each, compared to Cybernetic Pony having 4 QP, 
and actually 5 QP and 5 LC, 7 LC now. Cybernetic Pony at 7, 17 Minimark is getting legal class of his own and he can use it. Although, granted at this point, Monku can use his as well, but he is not doing so. He doesn't have enough pod class units. He doesn't have a Spire yet. He had a Spire, but the Faro that built it got killed before it had a chance. Another Spire coming up, and from here I expect to see pod class units. I expect to see some legal class units being built. Probably Sepi Legos. You're getting a Faro pod and then using that with the Octopod to get Sepi Legos and use that to get rid of all the Aryans coming in. But granted, like I said before, preparing those defenses in advance, Monkuyi did nicely deal with these Faro Paws that came in. These actually are the Faro Paws in question, I believe. Yeah, it looks like the attack was echoed out, ultimately. So dealing with these Faro Paws in a different iteration of time, well, still definitely there, but that's... At least it's a moral victory, if nothing else. Although, wait, then that means Monkuyi never lost that Faro. So that means that there, this red time will have extra Faros coming in, and these Faro Pods are still going down. So I Pony might chronoport them back, but these Sepi Pods are going to take them out pretty quickly. And Monkuki building even more of those. So once the red time comes along, Cyber Pony's point, point of view, yep, two Spires, and the fences are still in place. So Cyber Pony is going for another full-out attack at this point. Which is not going to work again. More defenses in place. And the defenses that were in place further in the past that he tried to chronoport into last time, that killed him last time, are still there, and he is not wanting to deal with those. Moving back to base, Monkuki is actually holding his own, keeping himself in the game, not letting himself get taken out, and he is expanding as well. This expansion very vulnerable, but it's still an expansion, it's still some money. It's still uncertain because Cybernetic Pony can just chronoport back and deal with it. But it is something. Now, Cybernetic Pony, however, like I said, also a legal class and definitely made use of it. Monkuki, on the other hand, has not made use of it yet. I expected Sebi Legos. I am disappointed. I see no Sebi Legos. I see no Farapods either. So that is not going to be useful. This. I don't want to say this could be game because already, tw well, twice already, we've seen that an attack coming in from Cybernetic Pony has been just deflected by. Monkuki's preparations. Or at least once, but probably twice. It could have been twice if he had chronoported back. If Cybernetic Pony hadn't been on the ball about that, he might have chronoported back again into that same defensive line. However, Faro Legos are still kind of scary. And this group of units, Sepi Pods, Faro Pods, Faro Legos, all together, that is going to be scary all together. And Cybernetic Pony is probably about to show why exactly that's so scary. Maybe. I'm actually not entirely sure. Is he doing that? Monkuki is getting chronoporting of his own. Now, bearing in mind that Monkuki is still behind an economy, once he has chronoporting of his own, he can get these defenses back when they need to be. And Faralego being built up of his own. Why no Sippy Legos? I don't know. But Faralego's. Not a bad idea. Interestingly, neither player has gotten specials in order to get the Freeze Bomb. Chrono Freeze, or Stop Freeze. Not sure what his official name is. Because neither player is... Oh, Chrono Freeze. That's what it's called in the menu. We'll call it that. So, neither player going for Chrono Freeze. I'm a little bit surprised about that, given the amount of Faro Legos in play. Mind you, not totally surprised given the amount of Reefs in play, but then going... He's going for one of these expansions here. Either player going for another player's expansions. It wouldn't be a terrible idea to throw in. Ah, Sebi Legos. Here we are. So, Cybernetic Pony has his own Sebi Legos. Monkuki does not, and Monkuki... I don't want to say he's going to lose because of that, because Sebi's are surprisingly good against air. But it's going to be a disadvantage. And here we go. The battle has been joined. The 2250 mark. Jump forward a couple minutes. Jumping back a minute before that happens. Separating Pony, his point of view. He does see the battle happen. And he did lose a few units. Actually, he lost about half his army at this point. And the Faro Legos doing a fairly good job trying to get rid of their counterparts on Separating Pony's side. But not quite enough. And Separating Pony able to chronoport that back. Monkuki, on the other hand, has since he has chronoporting of his own, each of these units, however, is going to be 81... Q plasma to chronoport. He can actually chronoport all three of these Faro Legos and have them basically help themselves out in defense. More useful would be these Seppies and Seppi Pods. And just getting more Seppies and Seppi Pods overall. And Cybernetic Pony rejoining the attack at 21 minute mark with part of that army and actually before the Faro Legos even come into play, trying to take them out before they're born. And it's. Well. <coughs> sorry. It's not going to be successful. However,. These units are still in a really good spot. Getting rid of the Reefs as well. So that, at that point, let's see. Reefs, those get rid of 
Oh, should those clear status effects? No! You know what? I was wrong in the first place. None of these units clear status effects. It, it's in fact the Faro Pod that does this, and Monkuki has no Faro Pods. And at this point, none of the Severn Pony, actually. Well, Severn Pony has some for the, that haven't been chronoported back yet. Now, from Monkuki's point of view, the 23 minute mark, he's not. It looks like he's not planning on actually going for anything. He does have a Chronoport over here next to Cybernetic Pony's base. Now, these Far Legos, however, are actually not Chronoport. They didn't successfully Chronoport, and they're also quite threatened. Their very existence has been threatened, though they are still able to be born and come to full maturation. That's slightly more important part there. But they are... I don't know, that's still quite a lot of damage, and a second Chronoport coming in, Monkuki is able to get rid of those Farleos ultimately in the unplayable past, and that's gonna do Monkuki in. Still, I'm a bit surprised that that didn't come up, that the Chrono Freeze didn't come up, because seriously, that could have happened. Anyway, these Farleos trying to come back, seeing if they can maybe at best make a Paradox happen, but that's not gonna happen. There's just too much firepower coming at them. They might be able to take out one or two of the Farleos, but I don't think either of those Farleos Oh no, those Far Legos were actually... They were causally relevant. But even with that, even with that propagating and that change happening, that's that's not going to be enough. That really isn't. One Far, Le Far, Far Lego, rather going down like that, I don't think it was that sensitive at the time. I might be wrong, it might actually have been, but I don't believe it was. And for the purpose of getting rid of the Far Legos, it definitely was not. The Far Legos destruction is causally consistent. This is game. Monkuki merely has to surrender. And there goes that same attack we saw initially. This is at the 22-minute mark. Remember, the battle started at the 22-50 mark and went back to the 20-39 mark. That is what we saw in Cybernetic Pony, is jumping back to the 23-45 mark and sending back some units, looks like probably over to the 21-35 mark. That's one of the nice things about this game. This is the only game where I can say... The battle started at the 22 50 minutes in, and 20 minutes 50 seconds in, and ended up at the 20 minute and 50 second mark. And that's where he won. But that's the kind of game Akron is. That's the kind of game it was sold at, and it's, it is nice to see. That's one thing I kind of like about this even start setup, is that because it does encourage the players to kind of go for more of an economic build, you do see a lot more of the late game stuff going on. At least it seems like the late game stuff is coming up more often in the high level games, including and especially chronoporting. That is definitely nice to see. It does make writing up the highlights in the YouTube video much trickier because there's a lot to write up, but it does make for very interesting games nonetheless. Or at least for games where things that are unintuitive happen. Because frankly, Monkuki has been behind this entire game, and while he had put up a very valiant effort getting back into the game, Cyberpunk Pony had an economic advantage from the start. And while that early rush, it was close. It was really close. Monkuki nearly had it. Cyberpunk, he just... He kept at it too long. He didn't have time to echo it out. He, uh, echoing out and race switching, that would have definitely been a safer way of going about it. Unfortunately, he didn't see where the Impilla Past was at the time. He actually had, I noticed he didn't have that bookmarked at the time. That's a really good idea. If you're planning on doing a species switch, wait a bit, put a bookmark right before it, and then you might actually want to wait like five, five to ten seconds even if you want to be safe. But if you're really on the ball, you can do it near the start. And then... From actually, five to six is near the start. Any further back, you're going to be risking jumping into the edge of the timeline and not being able to actually pause. But yeah, five to ten seconds. If you're worried, maybe twenty, and then do the attack, echo it out, have the bookmark there. As soon as you notice that the present is getting about two and a half minutes away from the left edge, hit your bookmark, change your species, redo all your stuff, undo everything because the unit IDs will carry over to the new species and they might have other orders going on and then do your new strategy. Fast forward through it, and that is... But that that's a demonstration of what happens. A valiant effort trying to recover from that, though. So, let's see what time it is. It is 8.03. All right, that's gonna be it for me tonight. Sorry, only a couple casts, but rather long game. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everybody.